What we're doing today is culling my Les Paul collection. To keep the, uh, the circle of guitars <laughs> turning. I've enjoyed these for a while and now it's time for somebody else to enjoy them. This, this whole thing isn't about which guitar sounds better. The difference in tone is negligible. I'm definitely going to lose money on this if I sell it. My R8. <laughs> okay. I don't know. This is not an easy decision. I'm really a bit torn. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Guitaristas. Good to see you. So today, <laughs> yeah, Les Paul sale. That's what it says on the thumbnail. That's what's happening. In fact, it's a cull really. What we're doing today is culling my Les Paul collection. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how I managed to do it, but somehow or other I've managed to end up at this point in time with 10 Les Pauls, <laughs> as you can see. Um, yeah, 10 Les Pauls. I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not even really a Les Paul fan, so to speak. Not my favourite guitar. Um, I find them quite awkward, quite difficult to play, to be honest with you. Difficult to play sitting down. Difficult to play standing up, in fact. Um, you know, if you want to play above the 15th fret, for instance, you've got to do all sorts of contortions to get there. So, yeah, not my favourite guitar. Prefer SGs, as you probably know. But yeah, I've managed <laughs> one way or another to, to get a nice, a, a, well, a very lovely collection of Les Pauls. But I have decided the time's come to, to let, to let, all right, half of them, half of these guitars, there's 10 here, half of these guitars are going to go on reverb.com at the end of this film, okay? So hopefully people that appreciate them more than I do, will get an opportunity to buy them and then go to better homes basically i mean i do like all of these guitars let's get that straight i love guitars i love a les paul they're all works of art we're probably even dropping in pictures as i'm speaking so you can be perving on these things like i often do so yeah they are a work of art aren't they there's, there's no dispute in that each and every one of these guitars is a work of art each and every one of these les pauls is fantastic and um they're just not necessarily my favourite guitar to play. So some of these might as well go to uh, more appreciative owners. So you might get the chance to own some of these guitars, one of these guitars, or several, I don't know. You might be a mad, rabid Les Paul collector, and there might be five here that you haven't got and you need to buy. Well, don't let me stop you. At the end of this film, there will be a link to myreverb.com shop. And you can go ahead, you can have a look, see what, see what they're being sold for, and maybe buy one. Okay. All right. Quick run through what we've got. Chinese Tokai Love Rock with upgrades. The Epiphone 59 in Tobacco Burst. We've got a Gibson Custom Shop R8. Vintage, the brand, V100. This is the, the Mick Ronson knockoff. Epiphone Les Paul Custom. Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s, Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s, another vintage brand Les Paul, this is the Distressed Lemon Drop, another Gibson Les Paul Studio, and finally, another Gibson Custom Shop, this is an R4. So there you go, that's the Les Pauls that I still currently own, not including the Specials and the Juniors, incidentally, and not including ones that I have actually sold Recently, I sold the Cyrel 7. I wasn't a massive fan of that, so I sold that pretty quick. Lazarus, a guy called Max reached out. He, he, was, he asked if I wanted to sell it, and it was obviously going to a much better home. So I sold that to Max. Hope you're enjoying that, Max. And the Gibson Les Paul Tribute, that went recently in the trade that I did for the Flying V. But I do happen to know that that has now gone to a good home as well. Uh, Phil, who's a local guy, picked that up from, from the shop where I did the trade. And, and I happen to know that Phil's really loving that guitar. 
So that's proof that I do let them go from time to time. It's not easy, I must say, and it's, it's not gonna be easy letting some of these go. I've promised, I've promised myself, and I'm saying it, so I'm gonna to have to do it. We're gonna sell five of these. Half of these guitars are gonna go. I definitely don't wanna get rid of half of these guitars, but I've gotta do it, and I've gotta move on. So let's have a closer look at each of these. Let's have a, a listen to each of these. And then at the end, we'll come back and we'll, we'll decide which ones I'm going to list, okay? Today, using the Marshall Blues Breaker combo, uh, I've got it, I'm using the two notes torpedo attenuator, so I've got a, a minus 20 dB cut. These are the settings of the amp. I'm not using any pedals today at all. Just going through uh, a tuner, a tiny little bit of compression on the front end and a, and a tiny bit of slap back because this hasn't got a reverb on it, this amp. So, but what you're hearing is very largely just the voice of the guitar on the neck pickup and the bridge pickup. So no, no drive pedals at all today. Okay. So, um, all right, well, let's, um, let's go. know I like this because we did a we did a thing a while back I can't remember which film it was but I think I did a five-way Les Paul comparison and I think the question was if I could only keep one which one would it be and and I think it was this one at the end of it but then I only had five Les Pauls at the time so it's not such a simple answer now because I've got 10 but yeah this costs 499 pounds it's a gold top that's a plus. Love gold tops. This has got the Pro Buckle 1, Pro Buckle 2 pickups in it, we discovered in one of the other films. In fact, we borrowed these pickups uh, in the Tokai Upgrade series. There's another link in the description box for you. But this one, yeah, it's got um, a slightly chunkier neck than the normal slim Ds you get on Epiphones. Still got a bit of a D shape to it, which is not my favourite profile, um, but it's 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 fairly nice and chunky, so it feels good, and it's a nice weight. I think it was around about eight and a half pounds. This, so it feels good. It feels good. It feels like a proper Les Paul. I really like this guitar. It's got a veneer on the back, which is a negative, I suppose. Um, apart from that. It's a nice guitar, Epiphone 1950s gold top. So the vintage V100 reissued. This is the Mick Ronson looky likey, I think, <laughs> with the with the mixed knobbage. It's got a nice top on this. Look, it's got a really nice top. It's kind of a mottled effect. I'm not sure if it's a veneer or not, to be fair. It looks great. I think it's I think the back's got a veneer on it. 
black, fairly slim neck. I totally reviewed this, links in the description box. Check that out. Got some Mick Ronson riffing in that. Enjoyed this guitar. £338 uh, this cost me. Um, it's a good thing, it's a nice weight as well. There you go, that's that one. Gibson Les Paul standard 50s. <laughs> it's the real deal, isn't it? This is what everyone wants. Lovely looking guitar, this. Great cherry sunburst. It's the 50s one, so it's got a decent neck. Not chunky, but, you know, nice, nice feeling neck. But it's really sticky. I mean, now it's really sticky. It's quite warm at the moment, and this is just really sticky. Sticky Gibson neck syndrome. And this has been... It's quite a fragile guitar, this, when, when I got it. It's quite soft, the nitros. I banged it straight away. It's marked up. Check out the review, the review you'll see what I mean. But, yeah, I've, I've been on the fence about this guitar since I've had it because it costs so much, £2,199. You can get only like, four or five of those, some of those other guitars that we're looking at for the cost of this. So, yeah, this film... Is, is important, this guitar is on the right, it's, it's going to go one way or another. This is in the firing line. Epiphone 1959 limited edition outfit. They called it an outfit because it, it comes with a case. I paid £699 for this. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, £699. Turns out it's not actually that limited, this guitar. Hugely popular. They've sold loads. Loads of people, loads of you have got this and love it. it which speaks volumes, really. It is... You know, it was a collaboration with the Gibson Custom Shop and it's got Gibson Burst Bucker pickups on it. It's got a Burst Bucker 2, 3, CTS pots and hand-wired. There's obviously loads of stuff on this. Links in the description box. Okay, we did an upgrade on this. We, we changed all the hardware and the pickups, but it's all back at standard now, um, which, is, which is good enough, you know. Uh, it's got a nice... It's got a... a more of a C-shaped neck than the normal Epiphone. It's got this worn finish that does divide opinion a little bit, and it's got a veneer on the top, which divides opinion a little bit. My least favourite thing about this is the veneer. But it's, I mean, it's a, it's a real nice sounding Les Paul, this. Yeah, Epiphone 1959.
And a Gibson Les Paul Studio, a very popular entry level Gibson, really. It's a Les Paul without the binding, you know, and a nice solid colour. Uh, can't remember what the pickups are 490, 490R, and 490T, I think they are. 490R and 495T, I think. Reviews in the description box. <laughs> no, the review's not, but the link is. So check it out. But you know, I've covered it all. It's um, it's a rock and roll guitar. This has got coil splits on it as well. This one, for the purposes of this film, we're not using any pedals. All we're using is the neck and the bridge pickup, just so that you can hear the similarities or the differences between all of the guitars that I'm attempting to play today. I'm not having a great time, to be honest with you. It's, um, you know, it, it's quite difficult when you're trying to... <laughs> I'm playing 10 different Les Pauls today. God knows what it's going to come out like. But anyway, this is the Les Paul Studio. £1,249 this cost me. So, will it stay or will it go? Let's find out. <laughs> Phone Les Paul Custom. £535 I paid for this. It's a Les Paul Custom, isn't it? It's white. Alpine white. Not Arctic white, as I constantly refer to it in the review. That's linked in a description box. It's got an ebony fingerboard. It's got a Epiphone neck. D-shaped neck, slim, quite slim. It's a decent weight. It's got all the proper binding and it's pretty well finished this. Some of the tiny little bit of scraping on the lower horn there is a little bit wonky, but apart from that, this is a nice tidy one. Oh look, it's got some buckle rash on the back already. Or something or other anyway. Yeah, cool guitar. How do her classic pro pups in this? CTS pots, all inspired by Gibson's nowadays. The Epiphone inspired by Gibson range all have good wiring and parts. Not like they used to. Nothing shonky about these now. It's a nice guitar. I might keep this. We'll see. <laughs> Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop, uh, 1958 reissue, so an R8. This from 2016, it's the standard historic range. Sunrise T Burst, this is meant to be a plain top. The, the 58s were, were cheaper than the 59s because they're meant to have less flame on them, but this is. Well, I didn't get the memo, did it? It's got quite a nice 3D top, this. I don't know if you can see that by moving it around, but... Um, 
Yeah, this is the one that everyone wants, I suppose, really, isn't it? You know, the, it's the custom shop range. It's um, it's a thing, nice weight, nice chunky 58, not a baseball bat. I've got another one which has got a proper baseball bat neck. This is this is pretty, pretty nice. Quite sticky. Indian rosewood. You know, £3,799, this guitar. Does it justify that? Does it feel that much better and sound that much better than whatever it was I was just playing? I don't know. We'll decide. It might go. We'll see. Is my Tokai Gold Top UALS 62? Yeah, I think that was right. UALS 62 Chinese Tokai 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 cost 395 pounds. I did get it as a bit of a discount, they're normally around about 500 550. You can get them, but they're not so easy to come by. Description box for the links. There's three, three films on this. Upgrade, review and upgrade series, basically. Well, no, I think there's four. I think there's a review, and then I did a comparison with the Epiphone, I think. Five. There's loads, loads of films about this. But I did, did the upgrade series, if you saw that. You will know that this has now got some boutique paths in it, which we call the Mad Murrays. And as you just heard, they sound great. They really do. And it's got a Montes wiring loom in it as well. So this has been heavily upgraded. I've got a feeling this one ain't going anywhere. <laughs> And this is the other vintage brand guitar. This is the Greeny Moore. So I think this is the V100 MR. It's the Lemon Drop. Look, it says Lemon Drop on there. V100 Lemon Drop Distress, this one, as you can well see. This neck pickup's blinding. It's also got an out of phase position in the middle. Check out the review, links in the description box. Um, but yeah, it's got a real thin neck, which I think take a bit of adjusting. When you're playing all of these, you can feel the differences. But it's it's quite a thing. It, this has got a real nice sound to it, this. Yeah, it sounds great, this guitar. I mean, we established that in the review. So check that out, £319. I might keep this one. Let's see.
And then there's this. <laughs> so this is a uh, Gibson Les Paul Custom Shop 1954 reissue, or R4 as it's known. Double gold, as you can see, P90s and a wrap over bridge. Early one, 54, not the lightning bar style. This is the early, early one. Second incarnation of Les Paul. Nice chunky neck. This is what I'd, what I'd call a baseball bat neck. I think it's chunkier than the, the R8. But I've had this a while. I've not, I've not reviewed this on the channel. I've not even told you I've got this. I sneaked this in. I've had this, I think this is a 2019, so I've had it a little while. But yeah, this is, um, this is a thing. £3,599, this. So yeah, what do we think of this then? So there you go, that was 10 Les Pauls. Um, some of you might say that you can hear which ones I prefer from the playing. Some certainly had comments like that in the past. I think that can be true, but I, I, I don't think it's necessarily true. I don't think you can judge which ones feel better to me by my playing. I mean, you know what I've just done there, each one of these guitars, I've played 10 Les Pauls, probably about 10 or 15 minutes each, and, and, and obviously just chosen a, a brief section to include in this in this edit it's all it's all entirely improvised and to to keep that focus over a loop which sounds interesting when i start it's the same loop so all of the guitars you know were played over the same loop and that that loop to me sounded interesting when i started but two or three guitars in it's that <laughs> to me it started to sound a little bit dull to be honest with you and i was and i found myself going through the motions a lot um, sometimes you can see it, you can see in my, my body language. I, I watch myself back sometimes and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, I'm looking around and I think, yeah, that's not, that's not being lost in the music. That's thinking about what's for dinner, you know. And um, it's, it's, quite, it's quite hard sometimes to, to get any sort of consistency. In fact, that whole thing, you know, when I finished it, I thought, that's rubbish. I'm not going to be able to use any of that. And I recorded some other stuff as well, which we'll hear a bit of that on the play out. As it turned out, what I did there, I think, does the job. You know, it's, um, it's interesting enough, you know. So, well, look, you know, you be the judge of that. But you can hear what the guitars sound like, their natural voice. However, it's not really about the sound. This, this whole thing isn't about which guitar sounds better. These guitars, I mean, there's a wide range of prices here, you know, from just over 300 quid to nearly four grand. And the difference in tone is negligible. It's negligible in the real world. And, and you know, in any, any difference can be very quickly mitigated, that's a good word, by use of EQ or a different rig. Or, you know, I think we've established that a high-end guitar, say a custom shop guitar, is a connoisseur's guitar. It's a guitar that you own because it makes you feel like you deserve it, that you've arrived as a player, and you can afford it. And it's a fine thing, and it's a thing to cherish and love and look at. It's a work of art. But equally, you know, the guitars here that are, are, are you know, three, four hundred quid, it's exactly the same but just a different person, you know. That guitar will be cherished and honoured and perved over just as much, you know. They mean different things to different people. So yeah, the decision to cull my collection isn't based on sound, really. Um, it might be based on economic factors to a degree. Um, you know, I need to buy more guitars. <laughs> I need to probably buy more Liz Pauls, you know, <laughs> we'll find out. So I need to sell some of these, you know, to keep, uh, to keep the, uh, the circle of guitars <laughs> turning. And uh, as a lot of people say as well, it's the catch and release system. I've, I've enjoyed these for a while. 
and now it's time for somebody else to enjoy them. And I do think it's really important that, that some of these guitars, some of these great guitars, you know, deserve to be played by somebody that will absolutely love them and adore them and probably have them as their Les Paul, you know, their one Les Paul. You only need one Les Paul, you know. I dream of the day when I've only got one Les Paul. However, I probably still wouldn't play it very often if there's an SG close by. So, you know. But anyway, let's stop rambling and, and get on with this. Let's, uh, let me tell you which ones I'm going to sell and which ones I'm going to keep. Okay, so we'll start with the Tokai. Tokai Love Rock. I like this guitar a lot. I like the neck on this a lot. I like the weight, I like the colour, and obviously I've, I've put some blinding pickups in it and some nice hardware. The, um, the wiring is, you know, it still needs improving. It's got a nice wiring loom in it, but I buggered up the switch when I was uh, putting it in, so that probably still needs to be finished. So that's another reason why I'm going to keep this one. So this is the vintage, the brand. Mick, I will call it the Mick Ronson tribute. Uh, really nice guitar. Not so keen on the neck, it's quite flat. But, you know, necks, necks are things you get used to in five minutes of playing, probably. But I really like this guitar. But truth of the matter is, I haven't played it since, well, until yesterday when I was playing it for this film. I haven't played it since I reviewed it, which is probably about a year ago. It's a nice affordable guitar and it needs to go to a better home. So this one's going to be listed. Me Epiphone Les Paul Custom. <laughs> Alpine White, this one. It's a fairly new ac acquisition, yeah, addition to me, to me collection, this. And uh, I got this, I'd had a couple of Gibson uh, Les Paul Customs, as, as you'll know if you, if you saw this review. So I got this to... to to scratch my Les Paul custom itch, and it, and it does that brilliantly, and and for that reason I'm going to keep this one. Gibson Les Paul Studio, wonderful guitar, um, all the Les Paul you ever need really. If you're looking to scratch that Gibson on the headstock itch, you know, for a little bit less, this or the Tribute, which which we compared it um, with previously. That one's now gone, as you know, to a much better home. <laughs> this one should join it, really. You know, somebody deserves this more than I do. Because, again, I haven't played this um, since I reviewed it. Uh, nitrocellulose, this. Gibson nitrocellulose. Black, ebony. You know that can be an issue once they've been handled a bit. So you will find this one's got... Very fine scratches all over it, but on the back, <laughs> it's got that stand rash mark. I got a lot of stands, and I think I should put a cloth on them or whatever that people do. But anyway, some guitars, if the nitro's a bit soft, it marks them. So if you're looking to buy this, <laughs> it's marked. It's flawed. It's a Gibson. It's not too bad apart from that. I don't think it's got any dings in it or anything. But there you go. Oh yeah, and the uh, the pot was a bit scratchy when I reviewed it, so that might need some attention. I think it was all right now, but whether or not that will last or not, I don't know. There you go. This one, I'm selling it. Epiphone 1959 limited edition. This is the one, isn't it? This is the custom shop collaboration. Wonderful guitar. Again, all, all the Les Paul you ever need. Yeah, you heard it. It sounds fabulous, this. Comes with a hard case. Um, really, this guitar deserves to be in the hands of somebody that's going to use it and more than I do. I've really had great value out of this. I've done several films with it, half a dozen maybe. It's been great. But it doesn't get played. And I can't, you know, keep on rolling this out. And, um, you know, I might even in the future get, get one when, you know, in, with a different finish as, as well. But for now, this, this deserves to go to a better home. 
I'm selling it. So this is my Gibson Custom Shop R4, which I've just introduced to you lot today, in fact. None of you have ever seen it before, although I've had it a couple of years. Now this, so I got this actually before the, 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 the pandemic, and um, at that time I was still playing in my band. Not done that since, incidentally, but I hope to do that again in the future. But this is a guitar that I did actually use. It's got P90s, you see, and it's got my favourite wraparound bridge. It's such a nice weight, this. And the smell, you can actually smell it from it. It's got that unique Gibson smell. Still, after three years old, this. Um, I'm going to keep this. Going to keep it. Vintage the brand, Greeny Moore, or Lemon Drop to be precise. Distressed. Yeah. Some say a little bit of a rough and ready relic job. Uh, of course it is. It's what's a 350 quid guitar, isn't it? It's a bit of fun. But it sounds awesome, this guitar. It really sounds good. And a lot of owners of this have, have commented in how much they love them and um, this needs to be in the hands of, of somebody that will play this a lot and will love it because it's quite surprising actually I'm selling this one Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s so in many ways this is responsible for starting my well, appreciation of, of the, the new, at the time, Gibson in, uh, Epiphone inspired by Gibson range, uh, which, which this is. Um, I was amazed. I, I got this because I used to have a, a Gibson gold top, which I sold, and I got this, you know, to scratch me gold top itch. And I was amazed at how good this was. And I still am. And I do play this. Um, so I'm keeping it. Sorry. So that just leaves two guitars, and uh, if I'm to be proven a man of my word, one of these needs to go. Problem is, <laughs> they're both guitars that I don't really want to sell. So let's have a look. The Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s, if you've been following the bits and pieces I've done on this guitar in the past, you'll know I've kind of got a... I kind of got a love-hate relationship. But well, if, then I, I'm just still on the fence. Every time I pick it up to play it, I'm still on the fence. It, it, I don't know if it's really good or a bit underwhelming. I genuinely don't know. This is one of those ones when I play it, people go, oh, that's, you sound good playing that. It inspires you. I don't know if that's true. I do know that I really, I really have doubts about selling this. My R8. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've owned it years now. I've not really ever played it that much. You look at it and you go, well, it's a work of art. You've got to own something like this, you know. It's as close as you're going to get to the Holy Grail. Some people's Holy Grail. I don't know if it's my Holy Grail. Um, I, honestly, I've thought about this one for so many, for a couple of years now, I've thought, shall I just sell that? I don't play it. Two and a half grand these go for now, I think. I paid £2,200 on this. I don't think the used market is, is, is that robust for... Let's pull standards. There's loads of new ones out there. There's loads of deals to be had. And there's loads of used ones out there. So I'm definitely going to lose money on this if I sell it. But I don't know. This costs £3,799. Interest-free credit, impulse purchase. I know they sell for more than that now. I don't know how much... I would get for this now. I'd, I'd lose money on it. Absolutely, definitely lose money on it. Hopefully not too much, but I'd probably lose 500 quid or more on it. 
But still, that money, I could buy a lot of SGs with that, couldn't I? Hmm. This is not an easy decision. I'm really a bit torn. I'm, I, I don't want to sell either of those, truth be told. Let's pause and think about that for one second. While, uh, while I'm doing that, quick shout out, if you don't mind. You might have noticed that I'm in a different studio this week. Well, I was here last week, but to, to where I normally am, this is a downstairs studio, okay? And a lot of people have asked, would I do a little studio tour film? I've done that. I've done a little studio tour film and backstory, which is now live on the TV channel, the guitaristas.vhx.tv. So there's the link. That's live. If you're interested in a little bit more about what, what is going on here, <laughs> check that out. 30 days free. And, and obviously, if you want to sign up and support the channel after that, that's very much appreciated. So there you go, little quick plug for that. Back to the business in hand. Which will I sell? Gibson R8, is this the pinnacle of Les Paul ownership <laughs> for the guitar addict? Gibson Les Paul standard. I mean, in many ways, that's all the R8 was based on anyway, a Les Paul standard that was made in 1958. What's the difference? Hmm. Okay, uh, I've decided, I've made a decision. I don't want to sell either of them, honestly. But I've said I would. So one of them's being listed on Reverb as I'm speaking. Okay. So if you're, if you're interested in, in owning one of those or any of the other four, the link to my Reverb.com shop is in the description box. So go and check it out. Of course, it does occur to me that a lot of you have probably clicked that link right at the beginning of this film and, and already know <laughs> which ones I'm selling. But if you didn't, if you're if you stuck with it to this point, you still don't know. Well done. Congratulations for your willpower. And, and it will be a nice surprise if, if you go and have a look now. So, uh, yeah, appreciate that. Now, obviously, shipping UK, not a problem at all. Rest of the world, you know, it might cost you. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll list the shipping costs for the UK. If you're somewhere else and you're interested in, in any of these guitars, reach out through the Reverb.com proper channels and we'll talk about the um yeah the logistics of that okay but i'm happy to happy to ship anywhere you know providing we can we can work it out okay so yeah that's it um click on the link see what's for sale um i oh, should add actually just as another little shameless plug for for my tv channel uh, the videos, I always list the videos early and they're probably 12 hours earlier than on YouTube as, a, as another little bonus really for, for subscribing. So you might find they're all gone. Um, yeah, I think that's unlikely, but, um, you know, it's worth thinking about, you know, for the future. There are, little, there are perks, okay? There are perks for supporting the channel uh, uh, with, the, with a few dollars, okay? So, but anyway, hopefully you've all got the opportunity to buy one or all you know if you want to buy them all job lot you know guitarist's first les paul sale collection uh go for it you know go for it. make me an offer for the lot and make it easy anyway enough of this nonsense thank you very much for for, for watching and um i appreciate it and uh come back next week same time same place and see what we're up to then eh? all right cheers for now Ta -ra. Mm -hmm.